Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, you cheeky monkeys. How are you all doing? Hope you've got your tea ready. Right, I was missing yesterday because the roof on the boat continues my laminating. I was up there with a hammer and a chisel and my sander getting all the wrinkles out and uh, it looks like the surface of the moon and I'm very proud of it because this morning Postman Pat delivered me an award I had no idea this was coming. I didn't even know I'd been nominated. Here it is. I apparently am a legend of the boat roof fiberglassing. And I'm honoured to accept this. Thank you so much. All I can say is there can't be many very good laminators out there. But I'm going to accept it in the spirit with which it was intended. Yes, Harry turned up at the ball, uh, as we know. And I've... Oh, while I was on my roof yesterday, I was just thinking about it. Now, I don't know if it was an unlucky shot that they got of him as he got out of the car. But boy, the man looks like a ghost of himself, doesn't he? Um, uh, with a little hand out the back, like he's trying to shut his own car door. Um, they say a picture tells a thousand words. Well, it's just one picture. And obviously they have sports mode, these sort of paps. And... Um, what, I, what really shocked me, apart from the gaunt expression on his face, you know, the blood drained, which we've seen before, like when they were left, I was at the Royal Albert Hall or something, their last engagement where she was like doing that in the car and he just looked like, oh my God, I think I've just ruined my entire life. So he's not completely stupid, is he? The thing that really shocked me is something that I've said to Graham and me, we're both really aware of it. We both stand up with our backs against the wall to sort of straighten up and pull our shoulders back because as you get older, um, you, you can hunch over. It happened to my grandfather quite quickly, actually. He was always a very upright gentleman. Then my step -grand got ill and he was bringing her trays of food in bed and after two weeks he had the most awful paunch um, and he never recovered from it, never straightened up again, so... It's really important for everybody, you know, try and stand up straight as you can. Harry, I mean, do they call it scoliosis? Really, like, um, that was the bit that shocked me because once that starts to set in, I mean, the guy looks like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders, <laughs> brought about by himself and his darling wife, um, who didn't turn up. Uh, and I read, uh, I was reading something in the Daily Mail, I can't remember the lady who wrote it, I'll try, oh, I, I should have remembered and I should have written it down because I always like to give credit. Uh, anyway, she apparently was at the awards ceremony. I'll try and dig the article out, put it in the description. And she was sort of saying, what a lacklustre, um, nothing, nothing burger the whole event was. And she goes, as a, a living, she's gone to all the awards ceremonies, all, almost all the red carpet things in Hollywood for the last 20 odd years. And so she's used to it and she was like, it was just a room full of nobodies, it was a very much on a budget sort of thing. Um, yes, John Travolta was there, but... <sighs> and then there's Harry, but no Meghan. And apparently Meghan was billed as she was supposed to be there, but couldn't go because one of the little ones was really ill. So that was the end of that. I mean, does anyone actually believe that? Do they not have nannies? What sort of life-threatening thing was going on there? Really? No, something funny going on there. Something very fishy, fishy going on there. Um, I would have liked to have seen Harry in a, a black or midnight blue velvet ball gown that the mermaid one liked Princess Diana and I would have loved to have seen him dance with John Travolta. Perhaps someone like uh, Harry's grey suit or uh, the very talented Charles's voicemail on X could provide us with some images of Harry doing some twirls. Go away, fly. Uh, so the weather has set in again. State of play has come to an end. I've got to wait until it clears up so I can carry on with the boat roof. Um, but yeah, why was Megan really not there? Because I think everybody expected her to be there. I thought she'd be there, didn't you? It is strange, isn't it? Oh yeah, and the councillors of state thing. I've been looking into that even more. Now, the way I understand it, uh, if I've got this correct, is that the councillors of state, the whole position was created in 1937 for the, the 37 Regency Acts. Obviously, Edward VIII abdicated in 1936. 
And the then Princess Elizabeth was very little. So I suppose by 1937, they thought we'd better have a Regency Act. We'd better, you know, think how this is going to work out because I suppose they were worried that if King George VI had died like in 1937, 1938, 1939, maybe David would have come back to be a regent and they thought, no, we're not having that. Um, so perhaps that's why they created it for that very purpose. But they also created this sort of councillor of state. Now, as I understand it, councillors of state are just momentary. Uh, they step in. It's a temporary fix to sign some stuff if need be. Um, regent is quite another matter. Completely different matter. Regent is uh, like they're the monarch. Um, I'm from Brighton. And I guess a lot of you are familiar with the Regency period, which we refer to when um, George III was declared unfit to be a hold the throne. And so Prinny was the uh, Prince Regent. We all nicknamed him Prinny. Um, and Regency period is very sort of empire with the, you know, the high waistlines for the women and um, lots of this empirical Roman. I actually love it. I mean, I'm from Brighton. We have a lot of that stuff going on here. In fact, this house is um, Regency. So I fit right in around here. Um, and that was quite a long period, the Regency period. I'm not sure exactly how long. I would look on the Royal website, but I was looking at other things on the Royal website. And there are some pages still refer to our monarch as Queen Elizabeth II. I mean, how sloppy is that? Never mind remove Harry and Meghan's bio. The whole damn site needs a good overhaul, if you ask me. There's all sorts of stuff on there that is just not up to date or accurate. And I know people say, oh, you know, the royal family, it's not their priority. Well, it's not, I doubt very much if Charles... Uh, logs in on uh, to do his HTML and edit his own website. Bloody hell, they must have some staff there at the palace somewhere who are in charge of the website. Surely it needs upgrading and updating, or do they get an outside contractor in? They should have they should have a homegrown a web developer who can update it as and when because it is a living website, a living document. Um, so yeah, the Regency thing, uh, as the law stands, um, legally. The, if, if, this is just imaginary, this is never going to happen, but let's say it did, because someone said once, I'm only a plane crash away from the throne, didn't they? So, I mean, I think that has to be taken into consideration. Um, let's say there was a tragedy, and there's pr little Prince George. We're in the sort of the dodgy eight year until he becomes a majority at the age of 18. Legally, Harry, that's what the law says, it's the next in line that's over 18. That would be Harry. And the one after Harry would be Andrew. So it's all very well people saying, oh, the royal family are just fine, leave them alone, right? There's two sides of the royal family. Them as a private family, like for example, whatever health issues they have, that's their own private business, I don't care. And not that I don't care, I don't want to make it sound like that, but it's not my business. It's none of my business what's, what their health issues are. But then there's the other side where if certain members are no longer available, that is the state side. And that is our business. That is very much public. It's not a secret thing that goes on behind closed doors. The Regency Acts are passed by Parliament. They're public information. They're public acts. That's what's going to happen. So in the eventuality of, and there clearly is a problem with a certain member of the royal family, well at least one, right? I mean with Andrew, as far as I'm concerned, innocent till proven guilty. The guy hasn't done anything wrong. That it, I've got to see some. Whereas Harry, Guilty. He's guilty of writing a book. He's guilty of allowing his wife to trash the royal family left, right, and centre. He's guilty of a lot of things. He has done and actually said. I saw his lips flapping and I heard noises coming out of his mouth. Right? He is guilty of those acts. Now, they've got this problem with this member of the royal family who's clearly said he doesn't want to be a member of the royal family except he wants titles and he wants the taxpayer to pay for his security, presumably. That's what all the kickoff is all about. He wants all the perks, but he doesn't want to do any of the work. Oh, unless it's the throne itself. I'm sure that'd be another matter, wouldn't it? I'm sure certain people would step forth. I'm sure certain people may well be behind a lot of vicious and nasty rumours about Princess Wales at the moment, etc, etc. So, for the public, and because it is a constitutional monarchy, Aside from the website, things legally need to be tied up. There is no getting out of that. But for those few, and I have noticed there are a few that just can't seem to separate the royals as individual people and the institution and what is 
public interest. They are a publicly funded part of the crown. They're very important. They're the linchpin. The monarch is the linchpin. In certain eventualities, there needs to be clarity. Now, removal of titles, as I've said before, I mean, I'd vote for it, yeah, because they don't need them. They're, they're not in the royal family anymore. Um, removal of security, well, publicly funded, yeah, unless they're actually doing something for the public or they're on UK soil, well, they would get it anyway. But let's say there was some sort of unforeseeable tragedy, or I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future? None of us are, are fortune tellers. Then that is the reason that there are laws and procedures put in place. Because I can just well imagine there's some people in the wings itching to get nearer to the throne one way or another. Anyway, I'd love to know what all of you guys think. Thank you very much for listening. And I might go missing for a few days here and there because I'm up to things on the boat. And hope to show you some progress. Some progress I'm not going to show you at the moment. But uh, anyway, some people think I did rather well. Very pleased to say.